Hey guys, Todd Bettenhausen here with another sim racing video, and this is an important one that I've looked forward to doing for quite a while now. Um, what we're going to be talking about here is how to optimize your video performance, particularly with three screens, and even more particularly, seeing and getting rid of tearing. Now, before I get started, I've had some complaints about camera work in the past, and I'm no professional here. These things are designed to be informational, so... I do them in one take, so I apologize if the focus is off or, or whatever, but I'm going to do my best to give good information here and, uh, you know, try to look past the quality because, hey, we're just hobbyists. Anyhow, back to the subject at hand, and that's getting rid of tearing. I really hesitated to do this because I used to be one of the people that insisted, oh, I don't have that problem, or I've never seen it before, and what I have here is a 7970. It's a really high-end card, among the best, if not the very best, for iRacing. And all three monitors are connected directly via DisplayPort, and lo and behold, I'm not immune to tearing, as we'll soon see. So I've got my brother Kerry assisting here, and I'm going to hand him the camera, and he's going to go ahead and uh, keep the camera pointed at my video settings here. These are uh, pretty much optimal video settings, except for the frame rate cap which we're going to experiment with. And I've discovered that the centripetal circuit and the Skip Barber Formula 2000 car are a really good way to see tearing. I'm not sure you want to see it, but we're going to see it. And you'll notice, first of all, that I've got my frame rate capped at 60. Now these are 60 hertz monitors and, you know, this should look great. It should look a lot like V-Sync. And we're going to talk about V-Sync at the end and we're going to uh, show input lag, but I'm going to go ahead and show what happens when you run iRacing capped at 60 frames per second. I have a, a replay here teed up, and I'm going to go ahead and fire up the replay, so Kerry, take the camera for just a second. And I ran about 15 laps around the skid pad here, the, the centripetal circuit, and let's just watch what happens. Would you like me to remain stationary or try to pan with... Oh, I'll take the camera back now. Okay. Okay, as I pick up speed and, and go around the outside of the racetrack, I want you to notice the lines that are painted across the track here, and watch what happens. Oh my gosh, that looks horrible. You can see that slow-moving, large displacement tear that results simply because... And go ahead and take the camera, carry. Simply because the monitors are not in exact sync with the 60 frames per second that the sim is outputting. So let's go ahead and pause, go back into our options here, and the, the object of this game is to is to experiment the object of this game is to experiment and find the highest frame rate that you can find which supports the level of eye candy you want and we showed my settings there at the beginning I've got everything except the uh, grandstands and crowds at low uh, I'm not running two pass shadows uh, I don't have higher detail in mirrors but pretty much everything else is on and what I've done is I've, I've searched for a frame rate here that my system can hold even under the worst of circumstances and that's tracks like Spa and Suzuka you know the trouble spots in eye racing so if we go in here and we go into our graphic options, I'm going to go ahead and take that AC frame rate cap and I'm going to go ahead and bump it down to 59. Now, what's going to happen if we run, and a good time to say this, you can actually change the cap without exiting the sim. Now to turn VSync on or off, you have to come in and out of the sim, but it's very convenient if you run a bunch of laps around the skid pad and queue them up in a big long replay like this, it's very convenient to to switch from one frame rate to another. So I'm going to go ahead and kick off the play key here and take the phone from Kerry and we'll see how this looks at 59 frames per second. Notice that the tear is running the other direction now. Instead of going away from us, it's coming toward us. It's still a large displacement and fairly slow moving tear. Go ahead and take the camera, Kerry. Very annoying and obviously it's, it's on the whole screen not just the uh, 
you know, not just the racetrack. You can see it in the buildings and trees in the background. And if I were to look at this from a blimp replay, it would look, uh, it would look horrible. So let's go back into our graphic options and let's try 61 frames. So Carrie's going to show that our AC limit now is going to be set to 61. And we'll begin to play once again. Now we're on the other side of 60. Remember what 60 looked like? We've got a fast moving high displacement tear. So you can see how easy it is to see your tearing and how it spans across all three screens. Pretty ugly stuff, huh guys? Well, if you play around with enough combinations of frame rates, you'll eventually find something that looks almost as good as V-Sync. And again, we'll, we'll come to V-Sync at the end. But the object is to find a frame rate that minimizes the tearing. In other words, the displacement of the tear is minimal and also which randomizes the tear all over the screens instead of being a slow moving tear like you see right around 60 hertz. So I'll go ahead and go back into my options. I'm going to ask, is this just pure experimentation? Is there anything that works like prime numbers or multiples of uh, 60 hertz? Th that's a really good question and I tried prime numbers and I found out that I got some better results with numbers that actually weren't prime and what you'll find is you'll find a, f a frame rate somewhere above 60 that looks good and then maybe 10 or 20 or 30 frames per second beyond that you'll find another one that looks good and so forth so basically you'll find a set of frame rates that work good just for sake of example let's say you know 73 97 and 113 just just for the sake of argument and what you want to do is you want to pick the frame rate that's, that your system can handle so I'm gonna just I'm gonna jump way up to what I found to look really good so this takes time it's just trial and error basically. yes it is and I found out that around 86 or 87 seems to be the sweet spot for my my system now I was running it at 87 but 86 has also looked almost as good, so let's see what it looks like now. Waiting for that white line to come around. And you can see there's a fast moving, very small displacement tear. I'm looking at it through the camera. Almost look like the line shimmers. Yeah, it's almost a shimmering, so go ahead and take the camera, Carrie. Let me pause. Let's go ahead and try 87 and see if or how different it looks. 87 is what I've been running. And I don't doubt that I can find an even better number with a little bit more experimentation. So we'll jump that up to 87. There it is. And we'll done our way out of it. And we'll play one more time. Very fast moving, small displacement tear. Doesn't look a whole lot different through the camera than 86 does. I don't know if Kerry has an observation he wants to make. I think to the naked eye, the previous 86 looked a little better. That's exactly what I thought, too. And that's why I came back to 86, because I have I remembered that from in the past. And this is just a matter of fine-tuning it. It has to do with what the actual refresh rate of your monitors is. You know, it may not be exactly 60 hertz. It's all about timing and just finding what what looks good through experimentation. And that's about as good as it gets. Um, I may be able to tweak it and get it to look just a little bit better, but as fast as that tear moves and as small as the displacement is, you never notice it while driving, unless you look into the extreme periphery of your monitors, like fence posts passing to your right on an oval, then you can see that they're broken up a little bit, but when you're looking ahead or where you're driving, or if you're driving down a white line and you're not driving quite a straight line, tearing can show up really bad there, like just after you make the left hand turn into the infield at Charlotte, where you run along that white line on the track. Tearing can really show up there. Okay, so we've talked about getting to V-Sync. And before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and get back in the car. And Carrie's going to show, and again, we're capped at, at 86 or 87. I don't remember exactly where I left it. But you can see the steering is pretty direct. There's not much lag there. So I'm going to go ahead and, and again, we have to exit the sim in order to turn VSync on and off. So I'm going to exit out of the sim real quick. 
And one thing I beside you, is it safe to say that if you have a tearing issue, you're definitely going to notice it more on objects that are passing directly at your 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock Things position. that are moving faster on screen will show the tearing worse, yes. But it's really annoying. I've done a lot of spotting uh, for you, Carrie. As, as we well know lately, I haven't done much racing. And the place where tearing really started to drive me crazy was replays. And I posted a couple replays during May of a uh, laps at Indy. And you can really see them, especially when you put the blimp up high at like a thousand feet altitude and objects on the screen get very small, tears get really annoying. And that's what led me down this, this road of experimenting to try to, uh, to try to get rid of it. So let's go ahead and go into our options here. And we'll turn the vertical sync on. And I actually should have done this before I exited the sim because now I have to exit and come back in one more time. But that's okay. Okay, so, so I guess what you're doing here with using the skid pad really optimizes a good view because your camera point is at the center of the infield and the car remains stationary in the frame and, and all the objects passing behind are most suitable to show you the tearing. Now, in a real sense, from the driver's perspective on track, I would say that people would most likely notice it uh, close to the outside retaining wall when there's signage or lettering on the wall. It becomes, it becomes really uh, obvious and apparent, uh, you know, in addition to the fence posts, of course. And iRacers who are using a single monitor system that haven't artificially widened their field of view to have better peripheral vision, in other words, the ones that are looking through a fisheye lens effect, aren't going to see tearing as much if they're using a realistic FOV, you know, close, say 45 to 60 degrees, aren't going to see the tearing the way somebody that has a rig like this, that has this wide field of view. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay, before I drive now, I've slid up to where I can drive, so it's going to be a little bit harder for Kerry to, to videotape around me. But I've got V-Sync turned on now, and here's the problem with V-Sync. And we're running 60 hertz monitors. This is a little bit better with 120 hertz monitors, but you can see the latency. Look at the delay. Wow. And that's, there's really no way around that. That's, that's a lot of things having to happen between the time you move the wheel and the time that image is, is written on screen. But while I'm in here, I will go ahead and, and drive a couple laps and we'll, we'll uh, wind the replay back and just show how fluid it looks. with V-Sync on it. And it's a shame we can't get it to look quite this good when we tune out tearing. Carrie, kind of focus on the right-hand monitor where the trees and stuff pass by. And you can see that this is as good as it gets. All three monitors are connected via native display port and everything's beautiful and smooth and we'll watch from the replay in the middle as soon as I run a couple laps. And we'll show what we're really hoping to achieve by tuning out tearing, but you can see that we did come very, very close. Having that white line moving across all three screens, that vertical line, is about the toughest test you can make for actually seeing tearing. And if you can get that to look good, normal driving, you know, where you're looking at the center of your center monitor, is, is going to look pretty darn good. Now that radial line that you're using, that, uh, that divides the skid pad into quadrants, correct? Yes. Okay, let me slow down here if I can do it without spinning this puppy. Does the input lag that's prevalent with uh, V-Sync make it more difficult for you to control the car? Uh, not like that when you're in a constant turn, but if you're on a road course where you've got switchbacks or you need to, to react very quickly. Yeah, it seems uh, like catching slides would be very difficult. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and, uh, and wind back a lap or two. There you remain. And we'll play. And I'll go ahead and take the camera.
And again, this is with V-Sync on. We'll see how it looks. You're bumping up on 15 minutes here too. That's okay. Oh, I sat here and talked for a minute. Go ahead and take the camera. Let me, let me fast forward a little. I was I was talking at this point. Again, please no dislikes over the camera work or the quality of the video, or we will come and find you. Okay. You can see now. I'm a little further forward in my cockpit and it's harder to pan, but you can see now that there's no breakup at all. Not even that shimmering effect. And that's because the video card isn't sending the video until the monitors are ready to receive each frame. The monitors are driving the refresh rate at exactly what they think 60 hertz is. So there we go. I hope uh, I hope this is helpful for tuning out tearing and also showing the effects of V-Sync and how much it can uh, contribute to uh, input lag or what I like to call output lag. So if you've got any questions, um, if you're an iRacing member, it's better in the hardware forums to ask me there or PM me there. Um, I don't get to YouTube as often as I should to answer questions. But again, uh, Todd Bettenhausen here with my brother Kerry. And, uh, Certainly hope this has been helpful to you. Thanks for watching.